Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's true crime video. So today we're gonna be talking about what happened to 19-year-old Yadira Romero Martinez. In April of 2021, Yadira finished her shift at Walmart and headed home. Unfortunately, Yadira would never make it back home alive. This was a very difficult case to research because I see my sister in Yadira, so it's really hard to imagine something like this happening to my sister. And I'm sure once you guys hear this story, you guys will relate to Yadira in some type of way. What happened to Yadira really sparked a conversation in the community about the violence against women, particularly women of color. Cases like this are just so unfair, you guys. They make me so upset, and I wish these acts of violence against women weren't such a common occurrence. So yeah, you guys, that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about in today's video. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome, bienvenidos. I hope you guys are able to subscribe down below before you guys leave so you guys can join this familia. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Let's just jump right into today's video. So Yadira Romero Martinez was a 19-year-old girl from Bloomington, Minnesota. She was born in the U.S., but when she was in first grade, her family migrated back to Morelos, Mexico, where they were from. Her family consisted of Yadira, her two younger brothers, and her mom and dad. Her family describes her as being a kind, gentle soul who was always working hard for her family. She was also a very welcoming person, so anytime she talked to you, she would ask you about your day, about what you were doing with your life, and she genuinely cared for your answer. So Yadira and her family were living in Morelos, Mexico for a few years until September of 2020, Yadira decided she wanted to move back to the U.S. At this point, Yadira's parents weren't able to come back to the United States, so it was only Yadira and her younger brother that were going back. Although it was going to be difficult to be away from her parents, Yadira was eager to come back to the United States in hopes of getting better opportunities and having a better life. She wanted a better future for herself and her family, so she was going to come back to the United States, find a job, and help support her family back home in Mexico. I feel like that really shows the type of kind and caring person that Yadira was. So they did have some family back in Minnesota, so it wasn't like Yadira and her younger brother were going to be completely alone. They still were going to miss their parents, but at least they had some cousins, some aunts, some uncles that could help them out. So in September of 2020, Yadira and her brother arrived to the United States. She got a job at a local Walmart and they started their new life together. The last time Yadira saw her family was in January of 2021 when she went back to Morelos, Mexico to celebrate her 19th birthday. So fast forward to Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. Yadira woke up, she got ready for the day, and headed to her shift at Walmart. Then at around 4 o'clock that afternoon, her shift ended at Walmart and she headed back home. Unfortunately, Yadira would never make it back home alive. Later that afternoon, a few of Yadira's cousins started to get worried because she hadn't shown up from work and this wasn't like her. If she was going to be late from work, she would call to let the rest of the family know or if she was going to go out with some friends or just do anything else besides coming home, she would communicate that with her family so they thought it was weird that she hadn't talked to anyone at all. Her family was concerned, but they decided not to call police that night. The following morning, on Friday, April 23rd, Yadira's cousin still hadn't heard from her, so they decided to go to the Walmart and look for her. When they got there, they learned that Yadira had never showed up for her shift at work that morning, and that's when the family knew something was really wrong. She took her job very seriously. As I mentioned earlier, she came to the United States for a better opportunity, for a better life, and to help her family back home, so this job was very important to her. She wouldn't have just missed her shift if it wasn't for something serious. This is when the family decided to call the Bloomington Police Department and report Yadira as missing. So the police department gets on this case and they start making missing persons flyers of Yadira and they also head back to the Walmart to try and retrace her steps. When police arrive at this Walmart, they get access to the surveillance footage from the day before. So they're sitting there watching this footage and at around 4 p.m. they see Yadira exit the Walmart and climb into the passenger seat of a car with a young man. This car was just sitting outside of the Walmart as if it was purposely there just waiting for Yadira. Thankfully, the license plates were caught on camera, so police wrote them down and began to track the plates. 
While police were trying to track down who this car belonged to, the Minneapolis Fire Department receives a call from a woman claiming that there's an unconscious female in one of the bedrooms inside her home. A few minutes later, firefighters arrive to this house and they try to get inside the bedroom, but the door is locked. They decide that they're just going to break down the bedroom door, so they break it down and once they walk inside, that's when they found 19-year-old Yadira Romero Martinez deceased. Yadira was lying down on a blood-soaked mattress with a plastic bag lying across her forehead and only wearing a t-shirt. Her face and her neck were bruised and she had what appeared to be a bloody outline of a handprint on her thighs. So the firefighters find this body and they're wondering how did this girl end up in this random woman's house. Police begin to question this woman and she says that she's a homeowner of this house and that she rents some of the rooms to other people. She said the bedroom where Yadira was found belonged to then 23 year old Jose Cuenca Zunica. She says that that morning at around 7:30 a.m. she had walked past Jose's bedroom where the door was partially opened. When she walked past the bedroom, she was able to kind of peek inside and that's when she saw a woman's feet just lying on the bedroom mattress. The woman didn't appear to be moving so she thought the situation was a little bit weird so she asked Jose about it. When she asked Jose about it, he said that the woman had too much to drink and was just passed out. Then he locked the door and didn't say anything else. Then a few hours later at around 10 o'clock in the morning, Jose begins packing a bag with some clothes, some food, and tries to leave the house. The landlord is watching all of this go down and she starts thinking to herself, who is this woman inside his bedroom and where is Jose going? Well, it turns out that his part of the rent was due later that day. So while he was headed out the door, the landlord quickly asks him for his payment and he refuses to give her any money. He says he's not gonna pay this month's rent, so she asks him for his room keys back but he also refuses to give her those. Then he quickly rushes out the door, gets inside his car, and drives away. The landlord is just really confused by this entire situation so before he drove away she quickly got out her cell phone and recorded him driving away. A few hours later at around noon the landlord decides to go back to Jose's bedroom just to check if the woman is still there. The bedroom door is still locked so she starts knocking on the door and after receiving no response that's when she decides to call the fire department. Props to this landlord for really following through and trying to make sure that this female was okay. She could have just minded her own business and have been like, eh, whatever, he has a girl in his room, that's his own business, but she knew something was wrong, so props to this girl for calling the fire department and asking for help. So while all of this is going down at her house, firefighters are there, the ambulance are there, the local Minneapolis police department is there, the Bloomington police department are finally tracking down who the car Yadira was seen climbing into belonged to. They finally get a hit and they see that this car belongs to 23-year-old Jose Cuenca Zuniga. So the Bloomington Police Department gets in contact with the Minneapolis Police Department and they start working together to figure out how Yadira ended up at this house and what happened when she got there. They were able to obtain surveillance footage from a neighbor's house nearby and on this footage they see Jose and Yadira arriving to the house at around 6 p.m. Then the next morning you see Jose leave at around 9 o'clock in the morning and then again at 10 a.m. Since Yadira was picked up at around 4 p.m. at the Walmart and then is seen walking into the house at around 6 p.m. Where were they during those two hours? More importantly, where was Jose now? To police, he basically was on the run. So police obtain a warrant to track Jose's cell phone and they see that he's currently driving through Ohio. The Bloomington Police Department contacts Ohio State Troopers and they eventually track Jose down and arrest him. So then on Wednesday, April 28th, 2021, Jose Cuenca Zunica was charged with intentional second degree murder and the death of 19-year-old Yadira Romero Martinez. At the time, he was being held in Ohio and was waiting for the extradition proceedings to begin to move him back to Minnesota. His bail was set at $1 million or $700,000 with certain conditions. His first court appearance was on May 10th and there, through a Spanish translator, he said he had nothing to do with the situation and that he wanted to be sent back to where he's from, which we assume is Mexico. I really cannot believe he is saying he had nothing to do with this. There's literally footage of him picking up Yadira from Walmart, driving back to the house, arriving at the house at around 6 p.m., and then her deceased body was found in your room. I don't really know how he thought he was going to get away with this or why he's claiming he had nothing to do with it, but that's 
that's what he says. Well, it turns out that this isn't Jose's first run-in with the law. He's had other issues with women in the past. He says he would not leave her teenage daughter, Maya, alone. In the hallways, he would corner her, and it got a little bit more scary because she was leaving school one day, and he asked her if she wanted a ride. And she said no, and he followed her. We were scared. She was scared to death. And so I said, let's just... Let's call the police. Specifically with this one coworker that he was pretty much obsessed with. He had been wanting to date this coworker for a while, but she constantly rejected his advances and this made him angry. When this female coworker started dating other people, Jose found out about this and started to become very crazy and aggressive towards this coworker. He would send her very threatening messages saying he was going to put a bullet in her head, that he was going to track her down, and then he would show up at her work and take photos outside of it to threaten her. He also had some very weird video clips of him holding a gun, waving it around. It definitely seems as if something is genuinely wrong with him. Now this coworker's family did get concerned about these threatening text messages and they filed a police report against him. He ended up getting charged with harassment and I saw some reports saying that he, he was going to jail but then was released on parole, so I'm not really sure what happened with that. But the point is that he has a history of being violent against women in the past. Because of this incident with this coworker in the past, a lot of people believe that somehow Yadira asked Jose for a ride home and when they got to his house, either he tried to make a move on on Yadira and she rejected him or something just really ticked him off and that's when he got violent against Yadira and killed her. This hasn't been confirmed by police, it's just a theory that some people have as to what could have happened to Yadira. There were some rumors saying that Yadira had ordered an Uber ride home after her shift at Walmart and that's how Jose had picked her up. However, police say that there has been no evidence to prove that a ride sharing app played a role in her case. So at this point, we don't really know how Jose picked up Yadira or why. Maybe Yadira had seen Jose around Walmart a few times and thought she could ask him for a ride home. Maybe she was just there stranded. Jose saw her and asked her if she needed a ride home somewhere, or maybe they knew each other in some type of way, but at this time, we just don't know how this happened. An autopsy was done on Yadira's body and it determined that her cause of death was homicide and it was due to multiple traumatic injuries. Police did find an object inside Jose's bedroom that they believe might be the murder weapon, but they haven't released much details about that. This is just really sad, you guys. Yadira had come back to the United States looking for a better life. She was just trying to do something good for her family, and something so horrific and traumatizing happened to her because of this man. I definitely believe it was a case of rejection. If that is the case, that really makes me angry that all of this happened just because he could not handle rejection. All of this was just really difficult on Yadira's family, especially her parents that were back home and weren't able to go back to the United States to be a part of this process, to have her funeral, to hold a vigil, and just be there with the rest of the family. I can't imagine how hard that is for her mom. I'm sure all her mom wanted to do was get on a plane, go to Minnesota, and just be there with her daughter for one last time. Thankfully, they did hold a vigil in Morelos, Mexico to honor Yadira, so at least the family was able to do that. This was also very difficult for Yadira's cousins and her family that was living there in Minnesota. La niña era como mi hija para mí. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Porque es hija de mi hermana. Y porque la conozco desde que era una niña. Y sé que era, era una niña buena. Que solo vino con una ilusión de salir adelante y de ayudar a sus papás. Se trajo a su hermanito para que estudiara y se preparara. Y al salir del trabajo alguien le robó la vida y le robó todas sus ilusiones. At first, when they heard the news that a young female was found deceased in this random house, they didn't really make the connection that it could possibly be their cousin Yadira. Jorge Ramiro heard the news and was shocked to find out it was his cousin Yadira. We didn't put two and two together because we just didn't expect it to be so sudden. It wasn't until it was later confirmed by police that it really hit them and they just could not believe that their cousin was gone. Her cousin Luis Romero says that he wants justice for Yadira but overall he just wants this to stop happening to women. He says this cannot be happening to people and that no one deserves to go through this. The family was asking the community to please protect their sisters and educate their boys and men about violence against women. I mean, Yadira's death really shocked the entire community, specifically the Hispanic community. 
Hispanic people that lived and worked in the area were really affected by what happened to her because they saw themselves in Yadira. They related to Yadira and the fact that she was Mexican, that she was an immigrant, that she came here for a better life, and something just so horrific ended up happening to her. A lot of women were making speeches saying that now they're scared something like this could happen to them, and everyone was just really shook up. And I honestly see their point. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I see my younger sister in Yadira, so it's really hard to imagine something like this happening to her. So then on Sunday, April 25th, people from the community gathered to hold a vigil for Yadira. The vigil started with a very small amount of people, but it quickly grew and over a hundred people showed up to this vigil. The vigil was held along the corner of 18th Avenue South and Lake Street, less than a block away from where Yadira was found. Her cousin said he was so grateful that so many people showed up and cared for Yadira, even though they didn't even know her. Besides these vigils, there was also a lot of gatherings that people in the Hispanic community created where they would come together and raise awareness about the violence against women, particularly women of color. I was watching some video clips from these gatherings and when these women are talking, you can just feel and sense the fear in their voices. You can tell that they're just so fed up hearing about another woman being killed by a man for no reason. Yadira's death also spread on social media and people started using the hashtag justice para Yadira to talk about what happened to her as well as share their own traumatic experiences with men. Casa de Esperanza, which is a violence prevention nonprofit organization, made a statement after Yadira's death. They said that Yadira should still be here with us. She was only 19 years old. She was a daughter, an immigrant, a Mexican, an American, a worker, a sister, and a gentle, kind soul. They urge people to help build a culture that values women and that doesn't demonize men of color, but makes the violence against people of all genders unacceptable. I think that's a really great message and I will have their website linked down below in case you guys want to read more about them. I definitely think that we shouldn't demonize men and say that all men are horrible, all men are evil, and that you can't trust anybody. I don't think that's the message that we should be sending. I think it's more towards saying that violence against anybody is unacceptable. So the family had made two GoFundMe campaigns where they were raising money to have Yadira's body flown back to Mexico and hold a funeral for her. I'm not really sure what happened with that because I was looking back at the GoFundMe and I saw that one of her cousins had made a post on June 4th saying that they didn't want to have any problems and were giving back the money to everyone that donated. I'm not really sure what that means but I do hope that Yadira's family was able to have a funeral for her and hopefully have her body flown back to Mexico so she could be with her parents. And that's pretty much it for this case. Jose is still behind bars, he's still awaiting trial, and if he does get convicted, he could face up to 40 years in prison. I really hope that Yadira's family gets some justice soon and that Jose never steps foot outside of prison ever again. I mean, this case is just so tragic, you guys, and so unfair. I did see some reports saying that Yadira was essayed and maybe R-worded by Jose. I haven't seen police confirm this information yet, but the fact that she was found wearing only a t-shirt and there were hand marks on her thighs makes me really worried that she was possibly essayed. She did not deserve this whatsoever and it's just really frustrating to hear another case about a young woman being killed by a man that couldn't handle rejection. I really hope that Yadira's family finds some type of closure and some type of peace soon. Again, we don't know how Jose and Yadira knew each other or how she ended up inside his house. But either way, you guys, just don't go to strangers' cars, don't go into their houses, and please, ladies and men, stay safe out there. 
So yeah, you guys, that's pretty much all the information I have on this case. I will keep you guys posted as soon as Jose's trial starts and what the outcome is with that. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts about this case down below. And if you guys have any other cases you guys would want me to cover, make sure to comment it down below. And yeah, you guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.